It tells a similar story about Matt and Larry, and they're in a homogenous product, oligopoly. It tells the inverse demand and the cost for both guys is the same at $1.03. It tells us that the discount rate is 0.326, and it's asking, what is the probability that the game will end after any given period, F, that makes the expected value of cooperating via Grim Trigger strategies just equal to the expected value of cheating? So we know that Grim Trigger strategies means I'm going to cooperate with you forever unless you cheat against me once. If you cheat once, I'll never trust you again and I'll punish you forever. I'll always play hard. So to answer this question, we want to start out with finding the profit for a monopoly. Because a monopoly profit is when these guys are going to cooperate. When two firms or more than one firm acts as one firm, that's cooperation. So when we're finding the monopoly profit, we can leave big Q in the profit function. We don't have to plug in QM plus QL for big Q. So we, live big, we leave big Q in the profit function, we take the derivative with respect to big Q, setting that equal to zero, and we solve for what big Q would be, and the quantity for a monopoly would be 24.85. So when they're cooperating, each will produce half of that, roughly 12 point something. So the whole industry profit is 24.85, or the qu quantity is 24.85, so we can find profit by plugging in that 24.85 into our profit function. We do this and we see that the monopoly profit is equal to 61.7525. So now we can find how much each person makes by dividing that by two. And we'll call that profit cooperate. So when they cooperate, the profit they make is equal to $30.876. So that's one profit we need. Now we need to find a couple more profits. Well, first we need to find the profit in the Nash equilibrium. Well, the Nash equilibrium is when they simultaneously choose strategies and they engage in core no competition. So this is going to be like question one and two, how we solved. We plugged in each other's reaction functions, we used substitution, and we solved for QL and QM. Well, we're going to do the same process here. We only need to do it from one person's point of view because both of these guys are exactly the same. They both have the same exact cost at $1.03 and they both have the same inverse demand. So we only need to do it for one of them, and I'll explain more about why. We take the uh, derivative with respect to QL, we set that equal to zero, and we solve for Larry's reaction function. But now here, before we, usually we'd be solving for QL, and this is what's important for you to understand. There's something happening here called symmetry. Symmetry means that both of them have the same inverse demand, and they have the same exact cost. So we know that QL is going to equal QM. So be very careful in the end. We know at the end of the day, if we were to find a reaction function for Larry, and then we went through and found a reaction function for Matt, those two reaction functions would be symmetric. They would look exactly the same. One would say QL equals something something QM. The other would say QM equals that same something something QL. So they'd be symmetric. And when we solve, we, found, we would find that QL was equal to QM. Well, we can take a little shortcut here because we know that's going to be the case. It's very important to, to note that this is after we've taken the derivative, so we can't plug in QL for QM or vice versa in the original profit function. We can only do it after we've taken the derivative, but now we can substitute in. So I've, I've substituted in QL for QM because I know QL is going to equal QM, and after we've taken that derivative, that's a legal substitution. So be comfortable with that, understand why I did that, only because of symmetry. Again, they have the same exact cost structure and they have the same um, inverse demand. Well, now that I've plugged that in, it's easy to solve. We can solve straight for QL and we find it to be 16.567. Well, that means that QM is also 16.567, so just to clarify. We can now find for the profit and the Nash equilibrium if these guys both produce 16.567. And this is just for Larry, but we know that profit for Larry is going to equal profit for Matt, again, because the quantities are the same and all the information is the same. We've solved that each player will make 27.446. So that's the Nash equilibrium profit. Now we need to find one more profit. Now we need to find the profit if they're cheating. Well, we know that if they're cheating, it must have meant that one player had convinced the other player to cooperate, and he cheated on him. So... We know that when, cooperate, when, when they're cooperating, both players are producing half of the monopoly output. So we start by looking at the monopoly output, which was 24.85.
we know that each person is producing 12.425 during cooperation. So what we can do if we're cheating, we want to plug in what we know the other person will be producing and then maximize our profit given that move by the other person. So let's say Larry's cheating. Well, we're going to plug in 12.425 for QM, for Matt's quantity. And now Larry's going to maximize his profit and cheat. He's not going to just produce 12.425 like he's supposed to when he's cooperating. So we maximize, setting the derivative equal to zero, and we solve for QL, and we see that that's 18.6375. So we notice that he's producing more than Matt. He's making more profit when he's cheating. And we'll see, when we plug that in, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to tell. Plugging in profit, uh, or plugging in Q cheat to Larry's profit function, we find that Larry's profit when he cheats is 34.735. So now we found all three necessary profits. At this point, it's very important for you to check to make sure that your story makes sense. Well, profit cheat should be the highest, 34.735, because you're cheating. We found that that should be the one-time highest payoff. The profit in the Nash equilibrium should be the lowest compared to the profit cheat and the profit cooperate. So profit cooperate should be in the middle of those two, for each guy. So this is for each person, their profits. Well, we know that R is 0.326, and we know that we're looking for F. Well, I did this in previous questions. Again, we're going to define 1 plus R over R plus F as X, just to make the algebra a little easy. Um, you don't have to do this, but this helps me a lot organize my thoughts. And we're going to set cooperating equal to cheating. Well, cooperating will have 30.876 times X, because X represents indefinitely into the future some amount of periods. And on the right side, we have cheating. Well, cheating is that one-time payment of 34.735. And then from ever there on out, we're gonna get the Nash equilibrium profit. However, we didn't get the Nash equilibrium profit in that first period. So we have to subtract one of those Nash equilibrium profits away from the end. From here, we're just gonna do some algebra and solve for X. We see X is equal to 2.125. And we remember x is really 1 plus r over r plus f, so we can plug that in. Now we're going to solve for f. We do some algebra, and we see that the highest uh, probability of the game ending after any given period to make cooperation likely is 